Today, we're gonna show you three tips to improve your jerk. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today, I'm joined by Olympian Chad Vaughn, and we're gonna go over three tips to improve your jerk for Olympic weightlifting. So Chad, what are the three tips that people can most find benefit? Oh man, my favorite three, they kind of, we're going to go in order here from the, the beginning of your jerk workout or your clean and jerk workout. You, you can do them if you're clean and jerking as well. Um, but I like doing some heavy overload holds okay. um, just out of the, the, uh, the squat rack there. Just take it out, hold it. We are going to add straps to that um, because what we're looking for here is we need you to get comfortable and strong in this position. What happens a lot of times is when athletes clean it, they're not comfortable here. They're, they're really struggling in the front rack. It's consuming more energy than we'd like. What I want you to be able to do is just relax here. Just take a few moments, you know, five seconds or so to, to be able to catch your breath, breathe, and switch your focus. And if you're not comfortable up there, if you're tight and you're struggling, um, then that's going to hinder your ability to clean and jerk as much weight as you possibly can, or even jerk as much weight as you possibly can out of the rack. So one way that we can get comfortable and strong there is say before the first three to five warm-up reps of um, jerk or clean and jerk, we can come out of the rack with starting with like a medium weight, building up in weight as you go after that. Adding these straps are going to help your mobility if you need mobility assistance there because they're gonna force you to have a full grip on the bar. It's gonna basically stretch whatever part of your upper body is needed when you're doing that standing hold. We're gonna hold it for 10 to 20 seconds, just getting used to owning that position breathing and being able to speak freely, taking small sips of breath as we'll see with you doing this hold here. Okay, so first of all, um, strapping to the bar. One, we've got Onyx straps here. I wanted to tell you that Onyx straps are my, the favorite, my, the best straps that I've ever come across. They're leather, they're comfortable, they're durable. I've had these for many years at this point. I recommend you check those out if uh, you haven't seen Onyx straps already. But strapping to the bar, notice that the overlap is to the inside. That indicates that's the left one, and this one is the right one. Okay, now when you're strapping to the bar for whatever reason, whether it's for front rack purposes or whether you're using them for snatches or deadlifts, you're gonna wrap to the inside one time. Typically, you're gonna wanna use your dominant hand to assist your non-dominant hand first, and then your dominant hand, you can go alone there. But again, just one time around to the inside is all we need. We don't need to wrap and wrap and wrap, um, and we don't wanna go in the middle or to the outside. This is gonna give you the best wrap and the most um, ability to for them to come loose if you need them to come loose. Now that we're strapped in, all Aaron's gonna do is just rack, it, um, take it out of the rack, step back, just briefly there, okay? Set a timer in front of you or have your coach watch you and just we're gonna hold here for 10 to 20 seconds. Notice he's able to breathe with this weight. There's 100 kilos on the bar right now, uh, but Aaron could comfortably do this with, you know, something. What we want to ultimately work up to is a load that's more then our goal, clean and jerk weight. Okay, get comfortable there, holding for 10 to 20 seconds and we can rack. Just doing one rep there. And we like to alternate that again with the first three to five warm-up sets of any jerks out of the rack or clean and jerk. So then he would then go into one of those sets and come back to this until he completes those three to five warm-up sets. I also need you to get comfortable and strong and aware in the appropriate dip position. So we're going to pause in the bottom of your dip for half of your warm-up reps. I like to say half of your warm-up reps up to about 70%. And then we can take the pause out and just finish the jerk or the clean and jerk work um, that we're doing for the day. Pausing in the bottom of the dip for two to three seconds and then jerking uh, from that pause position from there. We want to make sure that it's right first. So what I want you to know is the knees are going to have to come forward and out quite a bit for your shoulders to literally stay on top of your hips. If you're doing a pause out of position, that's not gonna help us a whole lot, right? So make sure you understand the best position before you do this. But once you have that down, uh, let's give a, a demo here. So let's say he's doing two reps here on one of his warm-up sets. He's gonna pause in the bottom of the dip for the first rep. And then go from there. Now he's gonna do another one without the pause, but of course, trying to hit the same position. 
very nice, okay? And we can rack it from there. So in other videos, you guys have seen us recommend to pause above the knee on some of your warm up reps for snatches and cleans. This is the exact same concept to pause, get strong in that, what is the transition point for the jerk, all right? Now, he's building up in weight in the jerk out of the rack or the clean and jerk. You let go of the pause, you finish your workout. What we're gonna end with, the last tip for you to improve your jerk is I want you to get strong and comfortable with the bar overhead. So we're gonna take the opportunity on, the, on your heaviest three to five sets of the jerk on your last rep. You know, at that point, you'll probably be doing one rep, but instead of throwing it down immediately, you, know, you jerk it and you throw it down, um, you're gonna go ahead and hold it overhead for 10 to 20 seconds, right? Just take that opportunity to get comfortable, to get used to this. And especially if you're a competitive weightlifter, you're gonna need to get a down signal. You're gonna need to get that down signal before you put it down. And if you've done, you know, uh, uh, holding for your last three to five sets uh, for a lot of your clean and jerk uh, uh, workouts or your jerk workouts, then and you're holding 10 to 20 seconds, then the five seconds that you're gonna to have to hold it at the most in a competition becomes nothing. But also getting strong and comfortable here in this standing position with heavier and heavier weight, what it means is that your body is going to be less likely to hesitate getting there, right? If this is a, a comfortable, strong position for you, um, a lot of reasons why people hesitate to get under the bar, for example, is because they don't lack com or they lack comfort and strength in the bottom of the squat. They don't own it. They don't own it. So the same thing here. We want to own the front rack position. We want to own the bottom of the dip, and we want to own this overhead position with heavy weight, so that our body can move more automatically and freely, and we can execute better. So let's let's see a rep here. We'll say this is his uh, final jerk of the day. Say it's a PR, close to PR. <laughs> and here we go, he's gonna recover. He's got control of it. Got this good stacked position. The body is straight, bars directly over the foot and the hips. He's in line here, everything is good. And notice he is taking small sips of breath in and out, getting used to that position, getting comfortable in that position. Um, and we can now rack it. So that was at least a good 10 seconds there for Aaron. But I recommend even starting with five seconds if you need to, if you're really uncomfortable there, if you're not strong there, but you're good enough in the jerk or the clean and jerk to get that weight overhead, start with five seconds and progress up to 10 over time, 15 over time, uh, 20 over time. Um, and the combination of those three things are gonna be so meaningful for your ability to get more weight over your head. I think the biggest thing is that all these different pauses expose problems. Yep that often go unseen because the movements are so fast. Yep. So as soon as a lot of people get that cleanup, they wanna get into that jerk, get it overhead, stand up with it and drop it down. And oftentimes, if you have problems, instability, or maybe even mobility that's limiting you to get into optimal positions, it's not seen until you actually pause. Yep. Just like we do with the squat or the clean or the snatch, we use pauses to illuminate and then fix problems to become more optimal in owning those positions. So especially with the jerk, holding it overhead, if you have optimal mobility yeah. to get you optimal positioning, it becomes an efficient position to hold overhead. So what is very difficult to hold overhead for someone who is in a poor position becomes that much easier because your body is supporting that weight through the structures that it was designed. It is bones on bones on bones on you know, joints everything is stacked. Whereas in an inefficient position, if maybe I'm forward or I'm sway back, now all of a sudden I'm having to bring into it much more muscular contraction to maintain that position. It's just that much of a harder position. It's inefficient. So we see sometimes a lot of lifters can get away with those inefficient positions and lift tremendous weights, but they're doing so despite yes. the problem. You know, they're, they're great they're very skilled as far as how strong they are and that outweighs their inefficiencies. But for the large majority of us, we're not that 1% or the 1% of the 1%. Fixing small things like this will allow us to get even better and reach our potential that much greater. Yeah, they're talented enough to get away with it. And yeah. you know, assigning these types of things to people, especially that overhead hold, and a lot of times I'll do that with what's called an overhead quarter squat, mm -hmm. coming out of a rack and just holding heavier and heavier weight. It absolutely has been something that exposes 
you know, um, strength issues or mobility issues. And maybe that athlete looks like this. There's a big arch in their back. You know, they, they have a hard time straightening their elbow. So that exposes, you know, either lack of mobility or lack of overhead stability. Mm -hmm. And so we, at that point, we can say, let's assess mobility, let's assess any uh, imbalance or stability issues, and we can combine these movements with the appropriate drills, whether that's mobility or stability drills to make those changes for the individual as well. Yeah, a great one last thing to point out there is for any of my coaches or just rehab practitioners that are trying to bring people back to the sport of Olympic lifting. Again, once we get our mobility and our stability with basic exercises, these are excellent drills too, to return someone back to lifting even if it's after an injury, because it's teaching those proper positioning. So um, it's very important for rehab professionals to understand these progressions as well. Yep. So, all right guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. I hope these three tips can be very helpful at allowing you to get better jerk technique and performance. Again, if you're interested in learning more about all this stuff, go and follow Chad on YouTube. He's got so much good content on there. And also subscribe to the Squat University YouTube channel as we have a lot more content coming out between the two of us. Again, if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have